guys, this is me again, Mila Kachin, and yeah, we are continuing uh, our lessons, our sessions from last time. We will talk about calculation, and we'll talk about technique of calculation, uh, most important tips, uh, the things are which will help you out to make the right decisions. So, in the very first, uh, in the very first video, we'll talk about uh, mostly about how to choose move candidates how to organize them, how to understand uh, which move, which line supposed to be applied. Uh, we kind of will talk about same things uh, here again. So I want you to understand the principles, the inside thinking, how we organize ourselves, how we finding the right solution. In, in, in fact, many of us were still failing. If you guys look at one of my most uh, recent videos, uh, uh, let's say my own game against uh, uh, Ivanov uh, from Rina tournament, uh, I failed uh, by not finding the best shot Bishop D1. Why I failed? Because I guess my subjectives uh, was wrong. Because my picture was wrong. They were how I thought. I failed actually twice in that game. I failed to me a missing Nazi 6 move. And I failed to miss in Bishop D1. So all those things I remember, it's important for you guys to understand. Well, let's talk about this position. This position uh, arrived uh, from the famous game Neither Kotov back to 1957. And this position has been uh, described in many books. Uh, in fact, the Kotov was giving his version, version of this position. Neither was giving his version of this position. And in fact, many other books, many other softwares have uh, been talking about this position as a to, you know, position to understand uh, the thinking process. And uh, Dvoretsky described this in his books. So I'll do my own version. Let's try to understand what's going on. Well, clearly we have battery on H file. But clearly we're attacking H7 square. And if you guys uh, remember my <clears throat> let's say the way how I describe, I call the square uh, critical because in, we have here two defenses versus two attacks. What else could be uh, attacked by white here? Clearly we have F7 pawn. So we found two subjects uh, to, to possibly be attacked. Well, uh, when the first impression which hit your eyes as a possible first uh, way of playing, it's a uh, Capture, 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 capture. Well, let's see what's going on. We want a pawn, we're happy, hooray. But are we playing this position to have this pawn up? I would play this to win a pawn. I mean, if that's your answer, then go ahead, do it. But I don't think so. You'll be happy here by just winning the pawn because white pawn structure kind of screwed. Um, I mean, black had two bishops, black king has easy way to escape in case any possible checks, right? And I think uh, you could have some issues uh, with, uh, with C-file, so black definitely has compensation here for insufficient material. So it's very important question for you guys, always has to be what are you playing for? I mean, if that's your goal, then go ahead. But if not, then figure out what to do. So what else could be done here? So we we we'll see uh, we saw direct attack on h7 pawn doesn't work. Well, what else could be done here? All right, well, I can see this guy is my primary defender. I can see if this guy will be eliminated from f6 square, and I can have a chance to attack and attack. And if this guy will be only 7, then it's going to be mate. Well, I guess that gives me some kind of picture maybe to do something like that. Well, sounds sounds very interesting. At least uh, if he does h6, I'm going to crush him by playing uh, not h6, and this is like uh, obviously mid. If, if he does, let's say, um, bishop b3, then I'm going to continue my, my thoughts, and I'm going to crush him by doing this, and then after king f8, I have very important uh, tactical matter here we have a pin, and it uh, looks like we at least winning two pawns now, because if the king goes uh, somewhere, I don't need to calculate, 
I can always play queen d8 and followed by rook b3. Well, two pawns definitely would be enough for me to win this game. How do I act here? What do I do? Should I be very really happy? Always advise. Check yourself at least second time. You see, uh, in a famous book of court of uh, in, I mean, in, I mean, calculation, I'm not sure exactly the name of the book, he said, trust yourself and uh, calculate once enough. I would never, ever accept this. I don't think so any grandmaster will simply trust himself and calculate any line by one time only. If someone will tell you that, my opinion, lie. Lie, lie, lie. At least checking yourself second time is always important. Because something could be missed by you. Something. And if you go slower your next time in this position, and you understand, okay, what could be missed here, if you understand what exactly you would like to do, you will find from black's perspective, from black side, the right move to defend. Well, let's see. Idea about this, to attack this, to attack this. We can defend h7 pawn by making h6, we you know that. But if you plant this, we'll avoid check and check. So after king f8, now you can't take on h7 because this guy hangs. So you must make an extra move. And now you must make an extra move. And even so, you have slightly pleasant endgame. And even so, you have endgame of extra material. I don't think so you're going to be able to actually win this endgame. Because black troops are running deep inside in your territory. And they will control both important files. You do have some issues with defending your second rank. So this compensation should be enough for black to make a draw. So that's how your first impression about how great your knight g4 move could simply, you know, turn around to be not the best move in this position. So you can look and look and look for that position and you can repeat your knight g4, you can repeat your, I mean, bishop f6, because you believe that the only two moves candidate. Um, and typically what's happening with players are low level, they could check second time, which again, in my opinion, it's normal. But checking the third time and more, that's already, you know, bad. So most of the times, if you saw the line, if you believe line is, could be applicable in this situation, go ahead, calculate as deep as possible, make sure you can, you will be able to visualize, you're capable to visualize the final position and you're capable to understand the final position actually keeps you happy. If not, okay, but if you believe something could be done deep inside there, all right, go ahead, check yourself second time. But even if it's second time, you're not basically reaching your goal, then don't try to do the third time and fourth time and fifth time. That's going to be time wasting. All right. What else could be done here? You see, this move, for instance, cannot be right because you have a battery. You have a battery and it's not supposed to be moved the other way. That's really called frustration. When you're frustrated, you can't find solution. But again, knowing your subject, we attack H7, could be F7 point at some point, right? And only you have to understand your problem is, one of your problem is, it's not having enough pieces to attack the enemy's king. But knowing your subject, it's supposed to be helping you to understand the right move. Because your primary subject here to attack was H7 pawn. And here you go. We have bishop c2 move, which indirectly and directly attacking h7 pawn. Because now we can understand he can't take rook c2, because now I can take on f6. Now I can take on h7 and pick up the rook. I'm going to be material. Is it going to be enough for me to win the game? Yes. I'm going to have a pawn and exchange up, so clearly winning. So I guess after bishop f6, the only option for my opponent remain should be this. And now, well, this guy hangs. Capturing here doesn't make any sense. Way too silly. 
we can't do a root three because f is bishop is hanging. But as we described at the beginning, we said a seven pawn its primary target. A seven pawn, since also critical square, its secondary problem. And we have a solution. We switch skewer, not anymore my queen in price. So after this must be done this. Well, otherwise, if you try to defend uh, f7 pawn by making this move, you're in trouble because I can capture on g7 and destroy the whole thing on the king side. So the only move, bishop f6. And very, I would say, very cute mate. Rook h6 check, pin, and mate. How we found that? How we found that? Because we organized our thinking process. We organized everything. We understood the primary attack on the 7th the double count. We understood our position need to be improved more. Because always remember, the standard set, every chess blow comes when your position is starting to provide overloading. When it's so productive, when nothing to improve. So in this case, luckily we don't need to improve our a1 rook, but we had to we needed to improve b3 bishop because our primary subject to attack was a7. And also knowing f7 pawn. Again, guys, always remember this. Remember this definition of uh, describing and knowing weak squares and critical squares. By the way, I have to mention, Grandmaster Nader, who was one of the greatest, greatest players in the world, one of my favorite players, one of the great fighters, I would say he definitely understood all those ideas. He understood, he saw the lines with bishop f6, he saw knight g4, he saw everything, but he missed this idea, bishop c2, I guess just because, I mean, square wasn't protected. And he played the move bishop d1. You see, he kind of switched the subject and started to attack f7 pawn. And um, Koto, Grandmaster Koto, failed here. It's very funny. I mean, he made here move queen a5 by trying to organize control play and attacking e1 square, the back ring. But again, I would say in these kind of cases, since you're dealing with uh, deep defense, you have to first provide defense uh, for your position. And since you have to understand why he played here, and if you understand why, then you might understand what's going on. So he missed the move, rook c7, and now what happens, I can take on h5, and now you're not gonna be, let's say, mating me because I can actually pick up this guy because this rook is protecting f7 and the black is safe here. So knowing this, understanding principles thinking from the end will help you out to find a solution. Instead, I'll just show you what's happening in real game. After bishop d1, black played queen a5, and now bishop h5. Clearly, that's what white meant to do. And now black has a big problem. They actually have no defense. They actually have no defense and that's the guy, Grandmaster Koto, who wrote the book about technique of calculation, failed to find the right move. I'm not sure why he failed. Maybe he didn't have much time on his club. But again, his responsibility definitely was to understand why Grandmaster Neither played Bishop D1. Because each time when you're making your move, you have some intentions, you have some purposes. You have to respect your opponent's thought, and you have to try to understand what he would like to do. I mean, sometimes his, uh, let's say, intentions, his thinking, it's way too weak, and if you believe it's way too weak, then you, let's say, having ignorance policy, and you're going to continue your own plan. But this intention was way too clear, way too clear, and I'm surprised to see the move queen 5 which uh, basically blunder, and after rook ed8, uh, black's position simply collapsed after bishop h6. I mean, there's nothing much to play. Uh, neither that's killed. Uh, caught up after this. I'll show this firework a little bit to keep you happy. 
after this, uh, Black finally resigned. But again, Black actually failed after having problem, after didn't see what's going on, after didn't read it, uh, the move of Bishop D1. But even neither failed before by playing Bishop D1 because Bishop C2 was the right path. And if uh, Grandmaster Cotter would see Rook C7, it would be simply wasting of time by playing Bishop D1. And second puzzle, guys, uh, from a, a famous game uh, as we talk about Knight of Kotov. So I'm going to say the same problem, uh, similar problem. Um, the game between two masters, uh, not, not really known masters, but the game's very best, uh, let's say, most recent game. Imagine the first game we talked about in 1957. This game played 2012. So how many years passed? And the game has been played in, uh, in Holland uh, at the vacancy tournament uh, open section between two masters. So Black's turn. So how Black's supposed to play here? Let's try to analyze the situation. Let's try to see what's going on. All right, we have uh, down the pawn. We have strong uh, uh, pawn on d3, right? And it uh, looks like uh, the white skin gets, could be in trouble because it looks like we have a weak square on g3. We have critical square on h4. Uh, unprotected, we have critical square on d2, we have critical square on this d6. Uh, in one of my lectures, I also mentioned this uh, rule. If you can count more than three subjects to attack, that's supposed to give you right to consider to find some tactical blow, some tactical solution. Again, I think what's happening in this game, Black definitely saw the idea of Queen E1. Uh, they definitely consider this as a primary move candidate to play Queen E1. And I guess uh, what's happening, uh, they just uh, skipped the line because maybe they didn't see like uh, what's going on here and what has defense. But they saw the idea at the first took on C4, they were actually trying to deflect the white knight uh, from being on D2. And I, I mean, what they did, they took on c4, and white actually took on c4 by, uh, by knight, which is very really funny, and which allows black to play queen e1, and then afterwards they made a draw, I guess being very really happy here, you know, like uh, they sacked the piece, they made a draw, genius. Uh, so they, see, they subject us here, the way how they thought, they've been trying to play for defense, because they thought they down material, and they have to be able to somehow like escape or draw because these two pawns are running so scary, ooh, you know. But if you think about who cares about those pawns now, this is still middle game. You really care about material, you really care about being material down when you're playing, you know, end game and when it's material, uh, let's say, so effective. In this case, in this case, clearly it's about attacking the king. And clearly I can see if white king on h2 and white queen on d6 has no connections, always remember this rule. If white, I mean, if someone's queen doesn't have connection to support his own king, that side could be always in trouble. So I guess what's supposed to be uh, the way how black's supposed to be thinking here, it's a, a thinking about more aggressive and having a little bit more accurate, uh, accurate calculation. Again, our subjects are white king, critical square on h4, and a weak square. Always remember this. Anytime when you see the weak square around the enemy's king, it has to be, it's supposed to be primarily option, primarily subject to be attacked. What black missed, they only saw the uh, picture of having this perpetual, but they completely missed simple check and no matter, no matter how white play king goes, this and made unstoppable. Simply made unstoppable. That's, in this case, showing to you the a wrong move candidate, the wrong way of thinking. But again, you see how I found queen g3 check? Because I described position rightly. I understood what it's going to be about. And this is going to be about, again, number one, weak square. Always remember, weak squares around the enemy's king has to be a primarily 
subject to attack, always way higher than anything else. Then numbers of critical squares. And again, the definition of critical squares are any square on which numbers attack and defense are even, or or any unprotected pieces. H for pawn unprotected, H to king unprotected, this is queen unprotected, and this guy unprotected. So we can see all white pieces kind of you know split all around the board. So they are in trouble. And all those things must show you, must push you to see those things. Immediately attacking, attacking, and attacking. So always check yourself against most force line. And you're responsible to see this check and this shot game over. All right, guys. I think you are understood uh, what I'm saying to you, my message to you. You keep improving uh, this area. We're still going to talk about technique, uh, most important tips I will provide to you, how to improve your calculation, how to improve your searching mode. And I hope you will like this series. And, um, you know, if anything I did wrong, you're welcome to send me any feedback, and I'll try to do my best to fix it for the next time. Thank you for your time, and I'll talk to you soon.